Right, welcome to this terrain making tutorial for Warhammer 40,000. I'm um, just going to be showing you how to make some uh, customised terrain uh, in some easy steps. Uh, I'm going to make palm trees in this episode. I'm going to do a series on desert terrain. Uh, I think it's going to be this first series I'm going to do. So uh, I'm going to show you how to make palm trees in this video. Uh, all handcrafted here. I'm going to show you exactly from start to finish how to get these results. But I think they look really nice. Nice and impressive, pretty realistic looking. I can show you how to do all the leaves, the trunk, and then we'll cover doing the base as well in this episode as well. So the whole thing from start to finish we'll show you in this episode. Do plan other tutorials so that you can uh, watch each of these and you can create your whole uh, battlefield based on a desert theme and that you can use it in games of Warhammer 40,000. It's great fun making your own terrain. I really do enjoy it um, and it's also a good way uh, of saving a fair amount of money. It doesn't cost too much. These aren't too expensive to make, but I think they're a great backdrop uh, for your games of Warhammer 40,000. Um, it's just going to be a just a, a standard palm tree here, so you will be able to use it for other gaming systems as well. Um, so any historical games that you might uh, want to do, uh, maybe Age of Sigma, uh, that kind of thing as well. Uh, it's just a just a standard palm tree, so you can use it for all sorts of different gaming systems. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run through the different materials uh, and tools as well that you'll need so you can gather all those together and then we'll take you through step by step uh, how to make uh, desert palm trees. Right, so uh, these are the materials uh, and the tools that you'll use, uh, you'll need. So uh, brushes, I'm just going to use, there is some painting required a bit of highlighting and so on. I just use one brush for this one, just a wash brush, quite a nice size too. You can use one that's a bit bigger if you want. Uh, the bigger the brush, the quicker you'll get stuff painted, so you could go for a bigger size. Uh, but a nice uh, wash brush there. Um, pliers, sort of flathead ones, ones that you can use to twist and bend wire if you need to. Uh, you'll see that later on. A good pair of scissors. Uh, these are barber's scissors here, I got them on eBay nice and cheap, only a few pounds, not very expensive, um, but you'll need those for uh, making the leaves later on. Uh, tape measure, I'll, I'll use that to show you some different sizes so that you can get the right scale of things uh, when you're making uh, the, putting the palm trees together. Uh, masking tape, now you can get that from uh, any sort of stationary shops. Uh, craft shops, so just standard masking tape. I'm not sure if it's called masking tape in the United States if you're watching, tuning in from there, uh, but it's like this uh, papery tape here, sticky on one side, then a sort of a papery type finish just there. But we we'll use that for wrapping around um, the trunk of the palm tree. It's got to be one that's sticky on one side and then paintable on the other. So you're not saying it's highly gloss where the, the paint's going to come off. Masking tape I found is great for doing the trunk. Uh, then you'll need uh, PVA glue, uh, that's short for polyvinyl acetate, uh, like a wood glue but it's not always the same. Um, you've got to get PVA glue, uh, not, not all wood glues are the same. Um, some wood glues can be quite brittle um, but it's PVA is the one you want. It's strong but it's flexible at the same time. So PVA glue if you can get hold of that. Then uh, some paints. So I've got here, um, this is for the trunk of the palm tree. It's uh, called Cafe Mocha. Uh, it's by Crafters Acrylic. Uh, but that, that's the colour there. You don't have to get, get this exact one. Again, I got this one off eBay. Uh, but just an acrylic paint of that sort of shade. That's for the trunk. Um, you can change the shades around, use different types of the same colour if you want, but that's sort of the colour I've gone for. Um, just open it up here. That's the brown that I'll be using just there. I've gone for the larger tub here, but it'll last a lot longer. It's cheaper than buying the Games Workshop paints. Um, then onto Games Workshop colours, still Legion Drab. we we'll use that to highlight the trunk. So from Sepia Wash, use it on the base. Then your Shabti Bone, that's for the base and the trunk and then some ceramite white as well and then, then Elysian green now this is the colour I'm going to do the leaves so that's the colour there you can choose different shades whatever shade you want a lighter green a darker green 
that's the kind of colour you'll get with a Lysian grain. Um, it's still got a, that hint of warmth and yellow in it, that lush sort of vegetation kind of look. Um, other greens that have all of the yellow taken out of them, they look a bit too uh, sort of a Christmassy type green. You really want more of a lush jungle foliage, so that Elysian green is sort of a nice colour. That's the colour I've gone for uh, for that one. And then you'll also need, you don't have to get these exact ones, but these are washers, large washers. Uh, and I use those to provide a bit of weight on the base. You want to put this down on the battlefield and then uh, it stays upright. You don't want them in knocked over if, the, if you bash the table, you want a bit of weight to them. So you see there, I've used it on the base, just there. Now you don't have to use washers, you could use coins, uh, pieces of lead, uh, anything heavy uh, that you want to insert in there. But washers are quite handy and they're very, very cheap. You can get those from a hardware store, a uh, plumbing uh, store of some kind and they're washers don't cost very much at all, very, very cheap. That's a cheap way of getting a hold of a nice circle shape weight to use. Um, just the size of these, it doesn't matter as long as they're roughly this size. They are just short of four centimeters wide or uh, an inch and a half, they're an inch and a half wide. Exactly, so that's those. They're quite thick, sort of three or four millimeters thick, just there. Uh, then, uh, green stuff, Games Workshop sell this, I've got uh, mine off eBay, again because it's cheaper on there, you can get a whole length of 36 inches uh, of it here, nice and cheap, but you'll be using that, using a fair bit of it, and that's to make the base here, again, green stuff dries rock solid, um, and it's quite heavy as well when it dries, so that's helpful, and it's something I can uh, sculpt and mould and insert the tree trunk into, and it will hold it there once it's dry. And strong. You can use other materials like a, uh, uh, like a modeler's clay uh, type stuff, but you've got to be careful. You want something that's not just going to chip and break up and fall apart. You want something that dries nice and rock solid. Um, I've, I've used green stuff here. I think it's pretty strong, pretty good stuff, and it will hold everything in place nice and uh, strong there. You buy it from those workshops, as I said, it's quite expensive, but you can get it cheap enough um, on eBay. Then, uh, lichen. Again, you can get lichen off eBay, no problem. Uh, it doesn't have to cost too much. That's the shade I've gone for, which matches uh, quite well with the uh, Elysian green. And that's just used to fill in here where the leaves are coming out. There's all wire and stuff, so I just cover it up with a bit of lichen just to make it a little bit more professional, and just to hide away all the tangled wires just there. So. That's your lichen you can get a hold of. Again, you can choose any shade that you want, but that's the colour that I've gone for. Sort of a warm, uh, yellowy, glowing sort of green kind of colour. Then, uh, one spray, which is Army Painter, and Desert Yellow. This is the key colour uh, that's going to unite all of the different uh, desert terrain projects that we're going to do. This is the sort of the base colour here. Um, whenever you've seen your basing work done, that's the colour that's sprayed on there and then all the other effects are added on top. So uh, Desert Yellow by Army Painter. If you can't get a hold of their version then just look around for other sprays. That's the colour uh, that you're after. Just there. There's a fair bit of materials really but they're not, they're not too expensive. They're quite easy to get a hold of. I found at eBay I think it's one of the best places. Again I've got, I've got the wire here from eBay. Um, you should just look up copper wire and then the thickness I, I've gone for 1.5 millimeters thick. For this one, uh, it's nice and strong. You can see under here the wire runs underneath where the leaves are. Uh, so it's nice and thick, nice and strong, not brittle, um, but not too thick. And then you see the rib of the wire running across there. That's actually quite realistic because that's similar to how a plant leaf looks as well. So 1.5 millimeter uh, comes in five meter lengths and then you just just buy a good quantity of it uh, on eBay. I used to use, uh, when I first started making these years ago, I started making these uh, about over ten years ago, I started making these palm trees, just sort of made up my own, this is my own method for making them. Um, but I used to use steel uh, wire, 
It was okay, but I found that when I stored it away, the damp got to it and it would actually rust and the, the palm leaves would break off after a while after they corroded. So steel's not so good. Copper is much better. It'll last, it won't corrode. And it's nice uh, flexible wire as well that you can bend quite easily and yet still sort of strong if you get 1.5 millimeter thickness. Uh, you can go thinner or thicker, but that's the thickness I've gone for. Just there. Uh, then on to some um, basing materials then. So this one is just regular sand, uh, but it's like, I think it's called sharp sand. It's sand, uh, you get it from builders merchants. Again, very, very cheap, just buy a whole bag of it. Uh, it lasts you forever for, for miniature gaming. Um, let the sand dry out. And then in amongst sharp sands, you get uh, stones, small stones, big stones. With a sieve, you can take out the bigger stones. Um, and then let the smaller stones come through. So it's a mixture of small stones and then sand as well. And then another tub of uh, small stones. Sort of nice basing material, this one. Uh, these are small stones that I found on a beach. There's a whole beach that had these kind of uh, stones here. So I've got to fill the bag of it and I use that for my basing. It's just a different texture, different type of stones that you can use. Use anything you like for the basing, it doesn't matter, but sort of a mixture of sand and stones. Whatever combination you choose will be fine. And then, uh, for this desert terrain, it will be desert, but I'm gonna have some green um, showing through, some grass. So this is a mixture of, uh, I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see actually. So just zoomed in so you can see, this is a mixture of long grain, flock, this is for the longer strands of grass. And then in amongst it as well uh, is the shorter green flock also that I use for my regular basing. I've just mixed the two together. You can add on some long and then just fill it in with some short. It's all just mixed together in that tub. But you'll find um, that when you shake it, the longer grain stuff comes to the top and you're able to plonk that on. Um, and then use the shorter grain stuff as well. Uh, this, the shorter grain stuff, is just the usual I get from uh, TSS, Total System Scenic. Um, it's called Verdant Green. But again, it doesn't matter, you can just pick up any flock that you want. You can use the, the um, static grass, the flock that Games Workshop provide, no problem at all. But it is worth looking out and trying to get a hold of some long grain static grass. And again, uh, eBay is a great place to get that from. I think Heike produced some uh, model railway shops will have it as well. Um, you'll be easily be able to pick up that. But the long range stuff really does look good um, for desert terrain when you add some uh, highlights and effects to it as well. Okay, so the first stage is uh, constructing the trunk and then uh, the the lengths here so that you can put the leaves on as well. So uh, you're going to use the wire here and we're going to cut it to length. So just to talk about scale, if you look up palm trees on the internet, usually they're, they're very, very tall. Um, you, you can do short ones if you want, but you've, I've found that tall ones look cool. Uh, so here's a rhino just to give you some scale. Uh, and there's the, the trees. You're sort of looking at that kind of scale there. If they're really, really short, they sort of don't look quite right. Palm trees should be long, elegant uh, trunks there, and then the, the cluster of the leaves at the very, very top, so that gives you an idea. Uh, it stands about 20 to 23 centimeters tall, from the base to the tops of the leaves. Uh, you can vary that length uh, by cutting your wire at different uh, lengths, short and long. So, we just open up the wire here. Just got a pair of clippers. Here again, just get them from eBay. <laughs> nice and cheap, doesn't have to cost very much. So for this tree, I'm gonna go for uh, 30 centimeters length, like that. So just the length of that mat here. As I said, you can add Take away five centimeters, add five centimeters, so you've got a variety of heights uh, for your trees, which again will, is realistic to have different heights. So just find the end. So just straighten out your wire. As I said, it bends quite nicely. 
cut one. Just being very rough here, don't be too fussed. I'm getting it exactly right. And then that just cuts away just there. Then once you have your uh, length here, uh, then instead of measuring each one, you can just pull your wire uh, to the length of the original. So we're going to there. And then once that's lined up, just cut it. And then we'll do another one here. So you just keep running them along. So uh, I would say for the number of these, uh, this one, it's got one, two, three, four, uh, five, six lengths to it. And that's sort of quite a nice cluster there. Six, six I would say is the minimum. Seven's good, eight's good. The more leaves you have, uh, the more of a cluster of, of leaves uh, you're gonna have. And I think the bushier, the better. I think if five's a bit spindly. Um, so you wanna do six lengths as a minimum. Seven's good, eight's fine. Um, you can go more if you wish. Um, so there's three. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna go for seven on this one. Right, so I've got my seven lengths here. Um, so now we're just gonna make the trunk. So you take one, straighten it out as straight as you can. Like so. And then, uh, starting at the bottom, you just twist them together. You want one to be your, your central wire and then all the others to wrap around it. So they're quite, it's quite hard to finish off with your fingers, that's why you can use the pliers. Uh, and then just a case of wrapping the wire around, like so. So I just run him up like this. What you're doing is you're making your branches for your palm tree, but also every wire you add is adding to the thickness of the trunks. The more wires you add, the thicker the trunk will get until you get something that looks like like that. So that's that one. I'm leaving a length here, uh, again just to measure it out, it's all about 10 centimetres here. We'll just leave those as they are, so we'll just stop there, take the next one, and again, uh, wrapping it around. And we can use the pliers just to finish off those endy bits later on. Then just wrapping around, going in the same direction, You'll see they start to line up and go in the gaps there, like so. Okay, keep going. And then I'm just going to stop short like that, just there. With that one, I'm just going to straighten up the trunk again. So you you would do these in batches. You'd maybe do 10, 20 trees at a time. So you just cut a whole load of wires to length. You know, it's quicker when you do it that way. Um, to be careful you don't cut yourself on the wire, it can be quite sharp. But uh, you just do it in batches and you just soon get through them. Put on a battle report on your computer and work on these as you're uh, getting on with them. But it'll be, it's very satisfying to make your own terrain. Um, but these videos will help you, sh or help you do it that they come out looking nice and realistic. So that's another one, that's the fourth branch. Looking quite good. Then we'll go uh, for the fifth one here. Again, the uh, trunk's thickening up quite nicely. Just wrapping the wire around. And then just gonna run up the rest of the trunk here. Maybe just bend the others a little bit just to keep them out of the way. So, be happy with that one just there. So that's your, five's a little bit flimsy, six is your minimum, I reckon. Um, gonna go seven here, which is a standard, I think, and then eight you can add. Uh, it'd be, it means also that you get a, to mix up the number of branches, just adds variety to the trees as well, so they're not all uniform. That's the great thing about making your own palm trees here, they're, they're not like they've been bought in a shop, you know, the, the, the quick and easy way around things in a more expensive way, but they've actually been custom made. Uh, and I think they look so much better. There, and then we'll put the last one on here. So just wrap it around. The great thing about copper wire uh, is it doesn't corrode, and also the, the it's strong, but bend, there is that bendiness in there. And even the trunk, uh, you can bend as well uh, when it's finished. 
um, because palm trees they they don't always grow straight up they grow at funny angles at times and you'll be able to do that uh, with using this uh, wire here so I'm just going to swing this one around perhaps just there just to get an even uh, spread of them like so okay so then you can take your pliers and just finish the end off just bring them all together as best as you can if there's ones that are sticking out you can't bend then uh, just cut them off and tidy them up whatever way you want to do it but you want to bring them all together you don't want them sticking out this is the end that's going to go inside um, and be inserted inside the green stuff to, to stick later on so you don't want it all wired out you want it all just brought together nice and neat like so okay so once that's done you've now got the, the, the structure of your tree is finished so you've got uh, your trunk which is nice and high and then you've got your uh, branches just there so the next stage is you take the masking tape and this is to to enclose all of this in just to try and create a realistic looking trunk so you start at the very top here and then I'm going to work my way all the way down to the bottom and I've just got it at an angle so that I'm wrapping it around like so gradually running down and it's creating ridges along here where I've wrapped the tape around that again that looks realistic because that's how the trunk of a palm tree actually looks so I just wrap that all the way around it seals it in really nice you can use your hand just to press the tape together it sticks nicely and you've got a nice paintable surface now all the way to the bottom, tear the tape off, and that seals that up, like so. So nice and quick really, pretty quick to get to that stage. Next part is you want, and this is quite important, just by hand, but you straighten these out as straight as you can get them. Because the, uh, the paper here for the leaves has got to sit flat on there. If there's any kinks and ridges, then the glue it won't make contact and you'll have a gap. So you want to make these just take your time to make these as straight as possible, just checking them from different angles. I mean, you can bend and adjust them later, but now is the time to get them perfectly straightened and lined up. So this one's got a bend in it, just going to put it back to there. So, this one, looking good with a bend in that one. I'm just going to straighten that one up okay I think that's pretty much it it's looking good right so then you can look at the, the branches here if any of them are particularly long like too long I think this one's too long here then just give them a trim I'm just gonna knock this one down to about here so watch your eyes because this can fly off sometimes uh, I think that one's a little bit too long so I'm just gonna nip the end off that one and this one as well that's it, and they're all roughly uh, the same length now. Maybe this one is a little bit too long as well. Just take a bit off there. So I've just evened them out. Like so. Okay, so you can put that to the side. That's that stage finished. Uh, we're going to go on to making the leaves. Just to mention, you see these little bits here. Uh, you can save them. Um, you may need them in the next uh, one of the other projects for desert terrain where we make the bush and the scrub. Uh, these can be handy, these rods here for sticking in uh, and then adding your bushes on using using them like a pinning uh, effect where you, you stick them into the the base and then with a little bit sticking up and you can then put your, your foliage on top. So hang on to those bits. Uh, you may need them um, in the uh, another episode for making the terrain, for making the bushes and scrub. Okay, so we're going to make the leaves here, see them on the uh, the finished palm tree just there. So uh, just regular paper, office paper, uh, not any high gloss or any special kind of finish, just regular standard paper is what you want to use. Nice surface for painting, nice and flexible, not too thick, just standard paper is what you're going to use. And then uh, here's an original that I've drawn earlier. So the shape is just, well, it's really that shape that you can see there. Now, maybe uh, you can see it's, it's more gradual 
the incline there and it's a bit sharper coming in at that end. So this is the end, uh, this is the tip of the leaf here and then coming in towards the trunk just there. So I'll just hold it on to one of these leaves so you can see. So it's something just like that. Now the correct size, it varies, it's well, it's well worth checking. This one is nine centimeters long. The most important thing is you check that, I mean this one's borderline, it's almost too big this leaf, but it's just about okay, so we'll draw around this one. Um, but you want it so that the, the wire runs to the very end, not so it's poking over like that, but so it's just right at the very tip. If you go, sh if you go short like this, uh, when you bend the leaf round, you'll have a bit that won't bend. It will just, it won't, it won't follow the whole leaf round. So you want to be able to glue it. So it's just at the very tip, like that. So that's about the right size. Nine centimeters is a good size. But check first of all. You may want to make yours a bit smaller, a bit bigger, um, and then draw one that works well, um, and then use that as a template to cut round for all of the others. Um, so. Again, you can batch make, you can make loads and loads of these pretty quick. You can design it on computer if you want, print it out if you want something exact, but it really, the, that shape isn't perfectly symmetrical, but as long as it's pretty good, you're not really going to notice it once all the leaves are bent round and cut, so you don't need to be too fussy. Um, to help make it symmetrical, you can put a, uh, make sure to put a line down the centre, so you then draw around it. I'll show you how I drew it. I'm just going to put a straight line running down here. So, do your measurement, whatever you want it to be. So say nine centimeters. And then I just start here. I just, I think of the width that I want. I would say it would be about here. And then uh, I just draw around, go along here. And then a nice elegant sweep. And then a, a, a sharper turn in just on there and then you can cut that out and bend it round to make it exactly right, but I'm just going to go freehand here. I think I should be able to do it roughly the same, like so, and then swing it in like that. I'm just going to take, you can adjust it, take a bit off, you know, take time on the original, making sure that's right, uh, and then that's your template then. But so that's that done. Then what you can do is I've got two sheets of paper here. I'm just going to fold the paper over. Fold it over again, like so. That means I'm going to do a lot less cutting because I'm going to have all of these uh, that are underneath. So I take my scissors just here and then I'm just going to cut around this shape, just to keep holding the paper tight. There's a lot of wastage here, I mean, you can draw. You can do a whole, you know, draw around a whole load of templates to get the most out of your paper. I'm just giving you, just showing you an example here, how it can be done. Just tuck that in there. Go around to the other side. That along. Tuck it in. It's going to nip the end off there. So that's my uh, leaves. And instead of just cutting one out there, I've got a whole set of them, like so, so you can see them just there. So that's your leaves all done. And they're all cut to the same size, ready for that tree. And as I said, make an original template, one that you're happy with, and then draw around that. And then that's your template for the leaves for the, pretty much the whole project. If you want to do larger and smaller trees and make a couple of different size templates, you could uh, maybe call this one the medium one. And you could do a large and a small if you really wanted to add variety uh, to your palm trees. Okay, so then once you've got your palm leaves cut out, you then want to, this is quite important, fold them like so. Just make sure that's nice and parallel there. So the ridge lines, so they're, they're folded straight down the middle, so you can see the ridge line running all the way through, like that. So I need to do uh, seven of these. 
So I'll just top this one. Yeah. And again, much quicker if you do these in batches. But I, I don't think the process uh, is too long. You can get results pretty quick. I'm just cutting these. I can see when I folded it. It's not just been a bit fussy here, but it's not quite parallel. So just nip that end off. Just bring that up so that they're all the same. So you just make sure they're nice and parallel. Just do it a few at a time. Yeah, won't be any harm. And just line them up. That means I can just correct this quickly. That's it. So, and the last few here. Just bend them over. Just they've got to be dead center, it's so important, especially with this tip here, um, that you get that right in the middle. And then the other end's not so important, just going to trim this. So it generally matches up. But as I said, not too, too important. Once they're bent over and, and, and cut and so on, you'll hardly notice any slight differences. There they are. That's the leaves done. So they're ready to go onto the tree. So, you take some PVA glue. It's so important to use PVA glue. Uh, super glue is too brittle, it won't work. Um, yeah, it will glue it, but it'll be tough, hard to bend, and it's, it'll crack and break. Um, normal wood glue uh, isn't quite right either. That can be very brittle, and it can come off. You want something that's going to stick to the paper and stick to the copper. Um, so I've, I've found that PVA works best. So. Remember that these are out nice and straight. It's so important that they're set out like that. So you take PVA glue and then you run some of the glue down the center, the inside center of the ridge. Not too much, not too little. Like so, it's a little bit too much at the end there, so it's going to take away some spare. And then you're just looking to rest it on top of the branch like so and just so you can see underneath so it's resting it trees this way up um, and it's just resting on top like that I've made sure that the end of the copper has, has gone right to the, the tip of the branch just like so just tucks behind a little bit and the, the, the branch is dead straight here, as straight as you can get it so that the glue is contacting all the way along the length um, and then that can just dry and hold that in position nicely. That's the helpful part about bending and making that ridge in the paper is that it's got something to, to, to sit on and not slide around or go out of shape. That's sitting dead center running all the way along the leaves, that's perfect. Just tuck that in, make sure he's up the right way, on him sideways or the wrong way around. Just sits on top. Just do that for all of the leaves. Uh, centre line of, of PVA glue running along, and then just plop them on top. Now you may have to do slight adjustments, make sure they're all stuck down. And then when you're totally happy, leave the tree standing up somewhere, uh, and then you just need to leave, leave that glue lid dry. It should take a good few hours um, to dry. Completely nice warm room should dry pretty quick. To be on the safe side, you can leave it overnight before you move on to the next stage, but you, you must let that glue dry. You can't do it too early, otherwise the leaves will start coming off um, when you're painting and, and bending the leaves and so on. So we'll get the rest of these put on. So uh, I've got the leaves all stuck on, on here. It is a fiddly stage, perhaps the most fiddly stage uh, of the project. You just really gotta go around once they're stuck on. Uh, really make sure that they are in contact with the paper, the, the branches here, so that the glue uh, is is in contact with both the copper and the paper all the way along the length there. Um, 
if you if it dries and you find an area where it hasn't stuck then there's no panic you can put some more PVA glue on I mean, it's going to slow you down a little bit but it's it's not too bad or you can use a little tack of super glue just in that particular area just to speed things up just to, to make sure it's stuck down but it's important um, that it is stuck down and here you can see just to, to push in the wire not sure it's, so it's showing but just tucked in a few millimeters uh, just at the end of each of those branches and then trying to keep them the right way up as well you see that so that they're ready to, to fold and bend the right way I don't have to twist the wire around too much to adjust them but there it is sort of an ugly stage really for the project this doesn't look much like a palm tree uh, but you're just getting the structure done uh, the most important part and then the more fun parts here the, the, the finishing off comes a bit later on but we'll let that dry it's so important just let that completely dry out and then we're ready to go on to the painting and finishing stages okay so uh, the glue's dried now I've let that dry for a good few hours uh, and I can see that all of the leaves uh, are nicely glued in place there so ready for painting next um, so the first colour we're going to do is the Elysian Green and it's basically a case of painting all of the leaves and then just wherever there's any copper as well just giving that a coat I think two coats will be needed just to give a nice solid colour so start underneath and again larger brush you're going to get it done a lot quicker I'm just using this uh, wash brush here which is quick enough uh, but you can use a bigger brush no problem at all there's no real neat edges needed so a larger brush isn't going to be a problem uh, so just run it along here now even though you're going to be cutting these uh, leaves to shape later on the paint does absorb pretty well into normal paper so even the cuts they won't have a white edge they'll still be green uh, all the way through so uh, that's handy it means you can do the painting at this stage instead of waiting till after you've done the, the cuts on the leaves so it's going on quite nicely we'll need a second coat just to take away that streakiness just there it's a nice color this listing green it was hard to try and choose the right color but wanted one that had a bit of bit of yellow to it, but of a bit more life than just sort of the more uh, sort of stark greens that you can get, but it's up to, totally your choice. So paint it on top, and then, uh, sorry, paint it on the bottom, and then paint it on top. And just run the brush along the edges, making sure there's no white showing through. And the paper starts to ripple and, and buckle a little bit, but that's realistic. That's what palm leaves are like, so that's not a problem. So just running it along, just there. I haven't thinned the paint down; it's just going straight on a nice, generous coat, and that does the majority uh, of the thickness of the paint there. And then you just do a second coat just to finish it off later on. So that's done, like so. And then just where the coppers all join together, you can just dab some paint in amongst all those gaps. Try and cover up the copper as best as you can. You're still going to be able to block it out with a bit of lichen, but it's good to get all that covered up with the green paint. So just working it all in. Don't want to see any of that copper really, so I'm just working the paint into there. It will look a bit streaky, but again, you can second coat this later and then. Uh, that will cover up the copper pretty good. Like so. So I'm just going to keep painting, just going to do all these leaves. Um, and then you just work, you spin your way around, and by the time you come back to this leaf, uh, it'll probably be dry enough for you to put the second coat on, so just keep rotating around until they're all done. Uh, I would mention sp spraying. Some, you might be tempted to say, right, well, I'm just going to spray them, it's going to be quicker. Um, good thing about acrylic paint is it's nice and flexible so when these leaves and the metal here are, are bent round it shouldn't flake off, I've never found it flaking, uh, it flexes with the metal. If you use standard sort of spray paints there is that danger of when you bend the copper here the paint's going to flake off, there's not as much flex in it so be careful of that. If you are going to uh, spray them, maybe an airbrush uh, using uh, these kind of paints would be a lot quicker uh, but again just experiment to see if those paints stick on all right, and if they if, if they're okay when you bend the metal around, but that's why I use acrylics here as opposed to spray paints. But I'll carry on here getting the rest of the leaves painted up here. Right, so we're just putting a second coat on 
uh, here at the moment so it's dried uh, as I've gone round and then just second coating the leaves. That's definitely enough if it's a generous coat, more than enough gives you a good solid coat of green. I'm just painting it on, looking out for any areas I've missed, any flecks or bits of white that I didn't get on the first coat, just making sure they're all covered and then that's giving that a nice solid coat of this Elysian green here. So I was just going around just doing all the tops and then just turn it upside down and then we'll do all the underside as well. We're just going to keep going here, get that finished. It really is quite a transformation once all that white paper's covered up with the green. You're well on your way to getting your palm tree effect. So I'll keep going here. Okay, so the green's uh, double coated there. Uh, just when you're painting, I found it's best to do sort of long, nice, neat brush strokes running all the way along there, just to give a nice even finish uh, as you do that painting. But you can see the leaves are done. So next stage is the trunk here. Uh, which we're going to paint using this brown, this crafter's acrylic here, Cafe Mocha. Um, I, I just use this uh, because it's, it's cheap, you get a lot in there, because the paint's going to go a lot further. It's just a standard brown, it's kind of that colour there. You're after. You can use Games Workshop paints if you want, but I found this one works just fine. Uh, but just find an acrylic paint that's an equivalent to that if you can't find this particular brand. Just going to squeeze a, a fair bit onto the palette there, just to make it easier. And then simply just paint it onto uh, the trunk here. And again, you can use a bigger brush than this. I'm using a wash brush, which is not too bad in size, but a bigger brush would be a lot quicker. If you're doing a batch of these, then you want to do it quick as you can, because there's not much need for neatness. Just running the brush along. Again, this is going to be two coats to get this a nice even colour. So just giving it a generous coating. And then I'm just rotating the trunk around, makes it quicker. Again, this isn't taking too long, you can imagine. Again, this is like the terrain, there's not too much like intricate painting to do, it's a lot of general sort of painting, so your process is pretty quick. Now, this very bottom tip will end up in um, stuck inside the uh, green stuff later on, but I'm going to paint as far down as I can. Like so, that'll do. Then what I've got here um, is like a, an empty box. I've got holes in the top. I'll just stick the drying uh, palm tree in there. It just doesn't touch anything there. It's just a hole that I've made. I'll show you. And you can see it's just stuck in the top there and it can just sit there and dry and it's not going to roll over or touch anything else, it just is suspended whilst the paint dries. And you can use that for whatever stage you're at. So I've got other palm trees here I'm working on, I'm just going to keep going uh, with this brown paint. Once it's dry just put a second coat on to make it nice and solid. Okay, so these are dry now. Uh, so the next stage is just to put a highlight on this trunk here. Um, for that I'm going to use the Steel Legion Drab, it's that kind of colour. Just there, let's so open it up. And again, using my uh, wash brush, it's dried out pretty good here. Looks like it's going to be a dry brush effect. And then just going to put some onto the palette here, just to take out the, the bulk of the paint. It's going to be a dry brushing effect. And I'm just going to scrub it onto the trunk here. Then what you'll find is it will pick out the details of the trunk and then also where the tape's wrapped around it will create a ribbed kind of effect and that's your uh, tree trunk effect just there it'll actually look quite realistic. Just a light coat just to pick out the detail not too heavy the main colour will be that darker brown and then just a highlight there of that steel lesion trap just picks out sort of a, the details and the rib kind of effect on the trunk. So just flicking the brush over the surface of the trunk here. It's not going to take too long at all, nothing major. Then just running it all the way to the end here, to the bottom. Make sure that's done, just rolling it over. So Sure that's all done. That will dry pretty quick. 
virtually ready to handle straight away on there. So that's that done there, that's the trunk highlighted, just picks out another colour on there, gives it more of a dusty kind of look if that's still legion drab, so that's that done. I'm going to go on to the exciting bit now, I think it's my favourite part. It's quite time consuming but it's, you, you do the next stage and all of a sudden your palm tree uh, is created. We're going to go on to cutting the, the leaves now. Okay, so just zoomed in a bit here so you can see. You're going to cut these leaves now. So you're looking to cut them uh, just using your scissors here. I uh, just got these from eBay. They're just uh, hairdressing scissors with a nice sharp cut to them. And I want to come in at an angle like this and then cut these leaves. Now, this will take you a while. But you're towards the end stage of finishing the tree, so. So that's the kind of, already you can instantly makes the tree look really realistic. Um, but you're sort of looking for those kind of uh, distances between the gaps. Now they're not all completely even, and again it doesn't matter because it's vegetation and, and real palm fronds, they, they split in different ways. So you don't have to worry about being precise on your width. Just cutting them uh, all at the same angle is the important bit. Now you can run the blades uh, longer here so that it goes up and it, until it touches the copper so it won't cut any further because I'm actually touching the copper underneath but it will stop sort of two thirds of the way up so instead I try to cut just without touching uh, the copper branch that's running underneath. It just means you can get a longer cut. Now I'm just doing it slowly here to show you but you can get quite quick at doing this. As I said, it's quite time consuming. Just run it all the way to the end. Tiny little clip on the end just there. And then I'm going to rotate around, make sure I've got the angle the same. Just sort of cutting diagonally. And then just running along here. I'll show you how to do one leaf. And then it's just a case of doing all the others. But as you can see, I'm just showing you here that, that there's no white paper showing through. The paint's absorbed into the paper. So you won't have to repaint the edges. Uh, now that's not going to be the same for all paints. Some paints may sit more on the surface, uh, but with the Games Workshop Elysian Green, it does soak nicely into the paper. So time consuming, but these palm trees, if you look after them, there's no reason why they won't last for years and years. The ones that we use in some of our games uh, that we have at the club at SSWG, they were put together about 10 years ago, so uh, and they're still in great condition. If you look after these, they should last your lifetime. So, see, I've cut all of the, the uh, on the leaves there, and already it looks good. Now, this is the really fun part. So, uh, finger on top, thumb underneath, you then sort of aim up and then sort of aim to bend halfway like so and then just roll even the very tip around like so so it's rolling over sort of that kind of shape like that so it's sort of arching right up you can then disturb the, the splits here you can move them around just turn it around you can tuck them in a little bit as to make them sort of drape down to, for that kind of effect uh, but that's the that's the fun part there, you get to finish the leaf off nice and realistic, but that's looking really nice. So just repeat the same process, cut and split them, rotate the leaf, cut the leaf round um, and then bend it round like that, do that all the way around there uh, and you'll have a nice effect, you get something looking like this one here. So I'm just going to keep going here, scissors are best, I mean a knife is going to be extremely difficult and more dangerous, uh, it's a good pair of scissors you need. Ones with a nice uh, cutting tip there. Uh, be careful as you're cutting, obviously, not to hurt yourself. Um, but this should be fine, you're just cutting at an angle all the way along. You can get quite quick. Nice pair of scissors, um, and you can get through that. Uh, but that's the exciting stage of getting to see the leaves form and starting to look really realistic. I'm going to keep going here, get all these leaves cut and then bent into position. Alright, so I've cut uh, the rest here. So some, you'll see some are positioned a bit higher than others. These two here, for example, are higher up. So I want those leaves to, to go above uh, the ones that are underneath. So I'm going to do these top ones first. So, yeah, and you can bend and flex the wire around as much or as little as you want. 
there is that flexibility there so that's quite a tall one and I'm going to go for this one just going to bend it a little bit position it up like so and then rotate it around I want it so it's above this one here so you've got like a uh, some a sort of a level here of leaves different levels which looks really nice there's another one here just going to bend that one around another one bend it around like so another one once these are bent round you really start to see the uh, how effective this technique is never had any copper leaves snap or anything like that it's quite flexible it's quite happy with how they've come out might just push them around there's, there's not much adjustment needed really uh, but just to push the leaves down where the ribs are a little bit just to make them even more realistic but that's a nice tree that's that's one that's three, four, five, six, seven. So seven leaves look something like that, which is quite nice and thick. You've got a good cluster of, uh, of leaves there. It looks really nice. So that's that stage done. So what you have then is these wires that can be seen. Now they're painted green, they look okay, but they are visible. Um, so uh, I found it's a nice idea just to, to block them off with a little bit of lichen. Um, so you're not gonna use too much, just a little bit from uh, your lichen bag. Just pull some lichen out. Maybe look for a colour that matches. I mean, that looks okay. I'm going to go for find a bit of darker stuff here. That's better. And just look for some darker lichen. There's another piece. Just being a bit fussy, but just find a lichen shade uh, that matches the colour that you want in here. This one is quite a nice match as well. So we've got some lichen there. Then you'll use uh, some PVA glue. And I found, instead of trying to fiddle around with like a whole section, just break off clumps and stick them on. So I'm going to put some PVA glue just over the wiring, being careful not to go all over the leaves. And I'm going to do this little chunk here. I reckon a piece about sort of that size will do it. I just stick it on, pushing it in, like so. I'm going to rotate the tree around and then there's another lump just there. Again, just break a bit off that I need and stick it up. And it just covers up those joins. And it's quite realistic. Palm trees have a similar kind of uh, effect on them. Just going to look on the inside here. You can hardly see the wiring now, so I'm happy enough with that. Um, and that has uh, just covered up the wires there. Just to show that you, just to show it's more organic tree-like effect, but that looks pretty good. So that's really the palm tree finished. It will give it a coat actually of um, purity seal. That'll seal in the paint. Purity seal's got a sheen to it as well, which is nice for leaves, um, but it's not too glossy. It's going to spoil the trunk. I with the purity seal, I'm going to wait until the whole project's done because um, it is handy to use on the on the base as well to, to key in the whole thing. And then with the flock, purity seal helps to keep the the flock to stick as well and just to add a bit more durability to the base. You, you can spray purity seal now if you want to, but I'll leave it until the very very end. So palm tree's finished. You can uh, give it a coat of purity seal and then leave it there. Some players or some gaming tables you might want to use the trees just by sticking them into your board. Maybe you've got a polystyrene board, you make some holes um, and the trees go in like so, or you've got some custom train, you want to have it with palm trees, without palm trees, so you just make the holes, palm trees can go in. Um, and that's quite strong enough, you can make the hole maybe an inch deep and the, the palm tree should hold. Some of the gaming tables we have at SSWG, that's how we do it. Um, so the trees, you can add them to the train or you can keep them off the train. Um, so you can stop there if you wish. I'm going to carry on with the tutorial here and show you how to make the base. So you can make individual bases. Uh, it's a handy way for the trees uh, in that you can just clump them around each other. So you can have clusters of palm trees uh, or you can spread the bases out and you can have as few or as many as you want. Um, so the key with the base then is weight. 
you want to have you want a big you don't want a big chunky base of a thick base it's going to look horrible um, but at the same time you don't want something that's really thin and light so that the tree just falls over during games you want something that's got a bit of weight to it so it doesn't fall over if you knock the table or if someone brushes against it the tree's going to stay up pretty good um, or if you know if the terrain surface is uneven uh, the tree's still going to stay up no problem so weight is what you'd need i'm going to show you how to make that next uh, using the green stuff and then uh, this washer as well right so for this particular tutorial i'm going to show you how to make a base just with one palm tree but bear in mind uh, you can and we do this with the, the trees at the war game club you can make uh, bases with multiple trees in them it's no problem at all uh, that's why sometimes it's good to do trees of various of varying different heights so that you're able to, to fit the trees together they do look good in clumps um, because they're bendable you can bend the trunks um, so that the trees go in at different angles and the leaves don't get too tangled but even if the leaves do interlock a little bit it's realistic enough anyway so it doesn't matter um, so the set I'm going to do a set here for my gaming table the desert train that we have and I'm going to do a series of singles like this maybe do five singles like that then a load of pairs and then I might do a few triples as well with triple trees on them just cluster together so um, but just for this particular example I'm going to show you how to do a single tree uh, like you see just there so green stuff for the base and then you want to cut an amount I mean it's just trying to figure out how much you need for the base maybe about six inches or so I'm not sure how long this lasts for I had some in my drawer it was a few months old and I managed to use it up just about um, so try and you know buy it your, your green stuff fresh from your store eBay or wherever you get it from and you're looking to use it quite soon um, so just take off plastic protection it comes with now you've got to mix that up by hand I've found <laughs> there is a, a, a sort of a, a cheater's way to do it because um, it can take you a long time to mix this up and that is to put it on top of a radiator or something warm for a while got to be careful you don't want it melting um, and making a mess so you've got to keep an eye on it um, that's mixing up not too bad but I'm going to speed it up by making it warm if you make it too hot it'll go like it will stick all over your hands um, so you've got to get it just right but I'm going to put it back on its plastic here I'm going to set it on top of a radiator um, you can use a hairdryer I think it will work just as well something warm um, and then uh, I'm going to let that go soft and it should mix up quicker okay so I've just pulled mine off the radiator here and it's re really soft maybe a bit too much <laughs> Uh, but it's coming okay, or not too bad. Just means you can mix it up quicker, it's going to save you time, less effort on your hands. Just keeping it moving here. If you know a quicker way to mix this stuff up, then leave it in the comments section. But I think that's about as quick as you're going to get. So, it's called green stuff because the blue and the yellow joining together will become green uh, once it's mixed properly. And you've got to keep mixing it. Um, until it is a proper green so that's too too early there um, you don't want weakness in it because it's going to be holding the palm tree in place you don't want it falling apart so you want a nice mix here till it's completely green strong stuff and a nice weight to it so that's why I rate it for um, making these bases now usually I wouldn't use it because it can be quite expensive but I found on eBay you can get uh, it pretty cheap it doesn't cost too much um, equivalent materials if you can't get a hold of green stuff um, would be you can get some modeling uh, sort of air drying modeling clays uh, not necessarily made of clay um, but similar type materials synthetic materials that dry out quite solid I haven't used those haven't experimented with them but I'd imagine they'd be pretty much similar but you don't want something that's gonna chip and break up you don't want something powdery um, or actual real clay that's going to be brittle perhaps and get chipped on the corners and so on you want something nice rock solid um, as much as possible and green stuff I think is pretty good for that um, so that's mixed together it's looking pretty grey not too bad so that's ready to go a couple little tricks here um, I'm going to put a piece of, a 
plain plastic down on my flat surface. So I've got a flat, a flat table, flat mat, uh, cutting mat here and a flat surface. That's important so you want your base to be nice and flat. And then this plastic surface means that once this dries, it will come off. It's not going to get stuck to the surface underneath. If you put this on a wooden table or even a mat like this, you're risking uh, the green stuff getting completely stuck to it and you've got a nightmare of trying to break it off. So something where you can, you can peel away from this uh, once it's dry, plastic surface will be good. So I wanted to make the round area and then I want to uh, save a bit to uh, help stick the tree into the base. So I'm just going to put that to the side. Uh, maybe take a little bit more of that, don't need to use too much, just a small amount. Leave that to the side. Now I've got this, which I'm going to use for my base. Then I want to get a hold of one of the washers. Just put that there, that's for the weight. And then I'm going to make my circle here, just in my hands, it's about a quarter of an inch thick. And again, I'm not fussed about this being a perfect circle, it doesn't need to be, it's terrain, it's natural shapes, so that's not going to be a problem. I just want it bigger than the the washer, like so. And I'll just push this over the top. I'm going to put. I'm pushing this down so it's going over the washer. So you can see underneath, it's enclosing the washer in. That will stick. That won't come out. If it ever does come out, just stick it back in with some PVA glue, um, and then. Uh, just working on this base here. Might have just push that down the middle because you know, the trunk's going to go in there anyway. Um, and then just, I don't want to make the edge too thin. I don't want it snapping off, but I'm making it quite thin because I know this green stuff's quite strong. And the thinner it is, the closer it will be to the table edge and the more elastic it will be. Um, that's the kind of size. You know, there's a lump sticking out uh, there. It doesn't matter. I think it's totally fine because it's organic shapes anyway. So that's not going to be a problem, I don't think. Plus, on your tray anyway, when you put it on, I usually add you a few stones and a bit of lichen to blend it in anyway, so it's not going to be too much of a problem. If your base is too narrow, if it's too small, the tree's going to fall over. The wider the base, the more stable it will be. So um, you do want to have quite a wide base. I mean, I wouldn't go much more narrow than that. I would keep it wide, if not wider. And then obviously, if you are going to make uh, twos and threes then you want to go for an even bigger base um, just to make sure they're not falling all over all over the place but that's an important point the other important point is to make sure that it's being modeled onto a flat surface um, and that it's all kept down and this will flex um, so be aware if you've got ends sticking up just to keep making sure that it's totally flat and down take the tree and just stick it in there. Now what you can do is take your pliers and then just base bend the end wires in sort of an L shape like so. That just gives you a little bit more of a flatter surface there to, to stick it in like so and it gives something for the green stuff to grip a bit better as well. Then uh, I mean that's not really going to stay there then I take the grey stuff here, model it into this kind of shape and literally wrap it around the base of the tree, join it together and then just model it into the rest of the base. I'm going to push it right up into the trunk here to grip around. Like so. And just now there is a, a line running around that doesn't matter because it's going to get covered in sand uh, and flock anyway so that won't be seen just making sure that, that grips tight against that trunk that's the important bit that holds it in position that's a nice strong join there the trees at a slight angle again doesn't matter it's a tree doesn't matter it's not an organic tree anyway so it just holds that in place now if I leave that uh, that's strongly held in there, but this is this putty is on the move here. It's got a flex to it. Um, that's just the way it is before it dries. Um, so what you need to do now 
uh, is just to make sure all your edges are pushed down. And once you're happy that it's in place, you need to go and set that somewhere where it can dry and lean the tree uh, against something. Uh, maybe at two angles, so make, make a, uh, like a, a V-shape, use some books or some, something that can lean against. And then once you're happy with the place that it's in, uh, just I'll zoom out here. So you can hold the tree up at uh, this kind of angle just to keep it in that position. Let it dry overnight, it will take quite a while for that to dry. Uh, you want it rock solid and you don't want the base moving around. Um, it's because it's quite, it's just putty at the moment, it just needs time uh, to dry and to fix in place. Once it dries, it will dry rock solid um, and that will hold the tree in place, no problem. So that's that one done. I'm gonna set this to the side now, let it dry, uh, and then we'll come back to the next stage of the basing. Okay, so, uh, this base I've allowed to dry overnight now, it's gone absolutely rock solid. Uh, so you can see I've laid it on a piece of plastic here, uh, had it propped up, uh, had a number of things holding it in position. Uh, found that if you lean it one way, uh, it can almost bend and go another way. You've got to just enclose the whole thing in uh, and keep it completely upright. Now if you do find that it has keeled over and gone rock solid, you know, it's, yeah, you may think it's ruined, but palm trees do bend. Uh, and, and come up in different directions. So just use the advantage there that you have of the uh, copper wire here and just, just bend it around back up into shape. Um, so it's no, no problem at all, even if there is a bend on the trunk. It's still gonna look realistic, palm trees do that anyway. Um, so I just take the, peel that off, so that's come off away from there fine. Um, important having that surface, uh, you're able to pull it away. Uh, so that sits pretty, Good. If you find there's a little bit of wiggle, it might be just a, uh, a piece of the uh, green stuff sticking out here. So you can use a knife uh, just to trim it and cut it, or you can sand it flat um, just so you get it sitting nice and dead flat if there is a bit of wobble. But this one's sitting pretty good, so I'm not going to make any adjustments to that. So nice and strong here with the uh, washer stuck in there, pretty good. So um, pretty happy with that. So the next stage then is to, to, is to get this base done. Um, so we want to create a rough texture to, to paint and to put our flock on top of. Uh, so PVA glue will stick nicely to this. So you just take some PVA glue, run it around. We've got our basing materials here, got the sand mix and the small stones. And then with an old brush, yeah, you may be tempted to throw old brushes away, but you can use old brushes for stuff like this. Uh, you can just paint it onto the base here, just spread it around, like so. Just run it up to the edge. I'm not gonna go round the edge like that because that's where it's gonna get bashed and it's gonna come off. Um, so I'll just leave that rim, just paint it up to the edge like that. It'll be fine. So I'm just run the PVA along there and then just neatly going up right the way up to where the trunk starts. So just up to there, it all helps to seal the trunk in nice and strong to the base. Uh, even if the worst happens, you do get a bit of chipping. I mean, the color underneath is green, which isn't too bad. You know, white would be worse or some other color, but uh, green isn't too bad, so that's all right. So that's spread around quite evenly, quite happy with that. So, I mean, you can use whatever basing materials you want. But I'm going to sprinkle on some of these uh, stones here, just in patches. Bash off the excess. That's my larger stones, and then just put that in there with the sand, just to put the rest of the edge trunk. Flicking it up to make sure I get it right up to where the glue is on the trunk. And then just using my fingers to tap off any spare, make sure it's all covered. Quite happy with that. I'm just going to use my thumb just to take away any sand that's hanging over the edge too much. I want to keep it quite thin though, I don't want that edge to be seen too much there. Uh, I'm quite happy with that there, just taking any excess sand off the bottom. And then that's ready to dry. So I'm going to let that dry completely solid again, you've got to wait. So it's good to do things in batches, you know, you can do all the basing, leave them for uh, half a day or overnight. Uh, and then come back and you're ready to go on to the next stage for basing. You know, so batches is a lot quicker. Uh, I was a bit annoying just having to wait for each tree one stage at a time. So we'll let that dry completely and then be ready to go on to the next stage for the basing.
So, uh, gonna let that dry. I have got one that's already done here, second palm tree. This one, this one's ready. Uh, I've based this one out and it's dried out. So the next stage is to give it uh, our base color for our desert terrain, uh, which is this color here from Army Painter. So it's called Desert Yellow. Not really yellow, that's like a, a like a, a light browny tanned color. It's a perfect base. It's got that dark color to it, so it does all the shading for it, and then you do your highlights on top of that. Um, so I'm going to give the base uh, a coat of that. Now you can use just like a piece of plastic or tissue or something like that just to wrap the base around uh, to cover the trunk and then just simply spray around uh, the base just there making sure you get the sides and then from every angle so that you give it a nice even coat to the base. I'll go and do that now, go outside and get that sprayed and then you'll see uh, how it looks. Okay so I've sprayed the base here, you can see the colour that's come up, just, just just unified the whole thing and just give me a nice base colour. You can spray underneath if you want, you don't have to, it's not really seen. Uh, but maybe just to finish off you can give it a light spray of the colour just there. Uh, and then just making sure all the edges are done as well. So that links that all in. So I'm going to highlight the base now. So Shabti Bone and then also uh, some Ceramite White. A palette here. I was just going to dry brush this. So sharp T bone. Just make sure I get it over the bristles of the brush, but dabbed out so that most of it, you know, it's not going to blotch the base here. And then just flicking the brush over the surface here. Just picks out all the details, and you can see there that it's nicely highlighted the details there and then that uh, brown spray that we've used, that desert yellow balmy paint has perfectly um, given us the shading that we need. So just an easier way to paint and to get your results quicker. Yeah it's a bit of effort to make a train like this but if you make them nicely, uh, take your time, get it done properly then this, these palm trees should last you a lifetime if you look after them really well so the ones that we've used at the club we've had for years and years and as long as they looked after they they're fine so I think it's worthwhile doing you can make it a club investment you know you can all sit around at your local club and all chip in and help make them just to speed things up if you want a big quantity of them done or you can just do your own set you know just 20 trees 25 trees It'd be a decent size for like a six by four table and plus you can use these for 40k or all different gaming systems we've used these for uh, world war ii games uh you know fights in the pacific that kind of stuff it's come out well for that as well so that's the shepty bone then some ceramite white i just use it's thinned down i've mixed it a little bit with the shepty bone just pick out a few of the main features just to add an extra shade in. So I'm not going to do the whole thing, but just a few areas picking out and that just strengthens that highlight. You can see it coming up there. Pretty happy with that. So looking good. There are areas like just around here, I can see a little bit of the green, uh, uh, the green stuff sticking through there. I can use flock later on just to cover that up. Any sort of mistakes like that you can use uh, just to cover that up. No problem. So. You can leave it at that. I then use a little bit of seraphim sepia to add a bit more of a, a shading dimension to this. So similar to how I do my basing 40k, just using this uh, in patches on the base. Just maybe around some rocks and features. Again, it just takes the flatness away, just adds in another dimension of colour. And I think it'll look quite nice. You can skip this stage, you don't have to do that. Uh, but that's sort of the process I'll be using on the rest of the desert terrain, so just to match it in with everything else. You'll see it more significant on sort of uh, other larger pieces of terrain where rock features and so on are sticking out. This uh, shading the set from sepia looks uh, better, it really helps out just to add a bit more depth to the model. But that's the base done, just let that dry, and then you'll be ready to put some uh, flock on to finish this uh, base off. Right, so then uh, for the basing, I'll show you one that's finished here. Just looking to do patches of green 
Um, and you do as much or as little as you want. So if you want some green on your desert terrain, uh, then uh, you do. You know, some patches have got lots of green, you just add more. If you want completely bare, you know, no green coming through, then just don't bother with the flocking stage. It's no problem. Um, but it's your decision. I'm going for sort of patches here and there. Um, and then it just adds, you know, it brings the green of the leaves and it reflects a little bit down here. So you haven't got that starkness of, you know, lush green up here and there's no life at all in the base. I, don't, I think it wouldn't be too realistic. You'd have some, you know, if you've got palm trees growing, you would have some grass and scrub growing as well, usually. So um, we're going to add a bit of flock here. So just going to squeeze a bit of PVA out on the base here. Then with the old brush, just lumps. First of all, the priority will be to uh, cover any areas that I don't want seen. So this um, green stuff that can be seen, just put a patch over that. And then maybe we'll go for a patch just here, like so. And then we'll go for a patch just there, sort of a larger patch. And then a bit there, and then maybe just one more, maybe just here. That will do. So sort of a random, random patches. So then I've got my flock here, and it's a mixture of long grain, static grass, longer stuff, and then also the short stuffs in there as well. So I'm gonna grab. I mean, you can do these in separate pots. These have gradually got mixed over time, but it's if you move them around. It's still quite easy to separate out the long grain from the short grain there just by giving it a shake. Um, but I'm going to put some long grain down first of all. Just onto my base here. So I want that long grain grass, static grass sticking up. Just moving it around, just want to make it so that it makes contact with the glue. Put some on here. Some on here. And it's quite important you get the long grain on. I'll show you at the end because you get to highlight the longer grain grass there. So I just use my finger, fingers here just to tap it on. That helps just the grass to straighten out a bit and to make contact with the glue. Then just tapping it now. This helps the grass to stand up on end and to stick in. See the grass is sort of sticking up, which is what you want. Just pushing it around. So there's some grass hanging over the edges, so just use my fingers to push that up. So that's done. Uh, and then the shorter grain grass can just be sprinkled on, and that'll go for all the gaps. This is the verdant green here by TSS. That'll go for all the gaps and find its way in and stick onto the glue. So you've got two layers of grass now. You've got the shorter grain stuff that's right in there on the glue and then the longer grain grass sticking up through it. It's just tapping away the excess. And that, again, it just helps the static grass to stand up. Just blowing a bit of weight and it looks pretty good. So that's that dump. So just zooming in so you can see the base in its detail. You've got the, the sand, the rough, ground, stones, and then now there's the grass effect there. And it's all block strain, it's all random. It just creates a nice uh, feature there, but um, looks pretty good. So happy with that. Uh, so you've got to let it dry now, uh, com out completely, and you'll see the whiteness of the glue just disappear because it will dry clear. And you'll see the grass sticking through, uh, and then we'll go on to the, f the final stage really. Uh, and that's just to give a light, a sort of highlight here uh, over the static grass. All right, so I've let that dry. Uh, so that's ready for just to finish off here with a bit of highlighting. So you've got, you have the green grass here and then uh, you have the, the desert base to sort of blend them together to make it sort of look like deserty grass. Uh, you can highlight it with a bit of the Ashabti bone and just the longer grain grass, you just flick some paint across that. That will highlight it up and it will sort of blend it in with the desert. Now you don't have to do that if you want it lush and green, you can just leave this stage, um, but I like to do it just adds uh, just another nice finish. So just taking some Shabti bone 
on my brush here and then you do as much or as little as you want now some of the uh, long grain grass will come off you know it's not dried and stuck some of it's loose but the one stuff that remains uh, will be fine so and not a total dry brush here the, the brush is quite loaded up and then just run over and you can see that's changing the color there it's just helping to match it in with the surrounding terrain I'm going to go over the top just a little bit just keys it in with the rest of the base so happy with that looks great so that's that finished um, so the final stage then after this uh, once this is dry uh, is just to give it a coat of the purity seal so um, Games Workshop purity seal has a bit of a sheen to it I'll show you one that's finished uh, I don't know if you can notice it on camera there's a bit more of a sheen on this one um, and then on the leaves as well it's pretty noticeable on camera and that's realistic you want a slight sheen um, if you look at leaves on sort of tropical plants they have a shine to them so and it also helps protect uh, the model as well uh, just all the light keys in the and helps to lock in the flock that's on the base it just adds another layer of protection helps prevents like things like chipping and so on just to some degree so it's a good way to finish off so you just give it a coat of the spray um, just spraying underneath and on top uh, another tip that I found, I think it works, um, the best way to keep these is to store them away inside a box, keep them all upright so that they, you know, be careful of the leaves here, not uh, interchanging, getting ripped or being bent up in the wrong direction. So try and look after the trees as best as you can. Um, but if they ever get to a stage where they look really dusty, I think you can give them a coat of the varnish and it sort of takes the dust away um, and just makes them lush and green again. I think you could do that, but um, we've sort of looked after the trees and haven't really got to that stage. So uh, but that's that finished. I'm uh, very happy with the result here. You've got a nice trunk. I think the leaves look really nice um, because they're handmade. You know, every tree is different, which is you know really realistic. Um, and then just basing them just gives them a nice weight. You haven't got to worry about trying to figure out how to put them on the table. You just place them wherever you want. Uh, you, you cluster them as far apart or as close as you wish obviously ones that come in pairs or triples you know that's nice clumps there for thicker sort of jungle um, so you've got that variety uh, but very happy we'll sort of pan out here and you can get a, a look at the, the finished trees right so that's just a view of the trees they're all finished nice and high above the other models so models can pass underneath it's quite handy for gaming and just have a nice feature that's higher up on the board but uh, we'll match that in with the other desert train this is going to be a, a series here. I'm going to show you how to do different parts for desert train too you can complete a whole table uh, with the desert theme so showing you how to do trees we're also going to do shrub shrubbery and clusters of foliage and then also sort of rough uh, terrain and terrain sort of features uh, and rocks formations and so on so there it is that's the tutorial for palm trees uh, a bit of effort to do them uh, but I think the results are really nice indeed I mean these have come out pretty good pretty happy of how they've come out so there it is from start to finish uh, for this terrain tutorial uh, for putting together desert palm trees thanks for watching and tune in next time